Hello and welcome back! In this video series, you'll be learning how to use physics handles, beam particle effects, and line traces. In the end, you'll be able to make this. A gravity gun. Let's get started. In part one of this series, we are going to set up the character blueprint. Part 2 will be setting up the effects. Let's start by opening the first person character blueprint. Here we have the projectile section of the blueprint. Let's delete it. We don't need it for now. But keep the input action fire event. So we select everything, but we don't want to delete the input action fire event. Now we need to add a few nodes. Drag out of pressed and type line trace by channel. We need to choose line trace by channel. Line trace by channel has a few inputs. The inputs we'll use today is the start input and the end input. To fill those in, First, let's get the start of the gun. In the viewport, we can see that at the start of the gun, there's a little sphere here. Right here. So we need to get this sphere. We do that by dragging and dropping into the event graph. Now we need to get its location. So we type get world location. And then we link that to start. Next, we drag out of sphere again and type get forward vector. Drag out of forward vector and type in a time symbol. Here, select vector times float. This will be the range of the gravity gun. Let's give it a number of 400. Now drag out of get world location, type in a plus, and this time select vector plus vector. And connect the output to the end. This will make the line trace go straight forward from the gravity gun. To see our line trace, we click on draw debug type and select for duration. Go back to the viewport, click on play, and now if you click, you will see a line trace coming from the gravity gun and going forward for 400 units. If you were to go to the wall and click, you will see the line trace has this red square hitting the wall. Now this red square is basically an indication that it has hit something. So we need to use the data that it returns. Now let's go back to the first person character blueprint. And you'll see here in the line trace by channel node, there are two return values. The first return value is the data that it gets when it hits an object. So let's drag out of it and click on break hit result. Here we have many different variables. But first, drag out of return value and type branch. This is a true or false node. So if the return value, which is a boolean, returns false, then we don't want our code to continue. But if it's true, then we want our code to continue. The next thing you want to do is to add in the physics handle. So we go here and add component and type in physics handle. So we click on physics handle and now you will see it in the components tab. Now we need to give the physics handle a location to grab objects. So go back into the viewport of the first person character and here you need to add another component which is an arrow. This arrow, drag it out, forward, so now it's in front of the character. 
and drag it up a little bit. With the arrow in place, the physics handle still does not know that that's the location he needs. So go back to the event graph and we need to add a tick event. Event tick. Now go back here into the components tab, drag physics handle out and we need to set target location. The location is the arrow. So get the arrow and get its world location. The next thing you need to do is to create some variables. The first variable will be a boolean. We'll call it holding. The second variable needs to be a component. And it's a primitive component. Click on object reference and name it object. Now drag out of hit component, type is simulating physics. Drag the return value and type branch. Connect the branch to the true output. And now we'll start to use our variables. So drag holding in and set holding. Connect that to true and set holding to true. So that means every time you grab an object, this variable becomes true. Next, drag the physics handle out and grab component at location. The component we want to grab is the one the line trace hit and the location will be the component's location. Connect the return value to grab location and you're nearly done. The last thing we need to do is to release the object. So what I'm gonna do is every time you keep pressing the mouse button then you grab the object but when you release the mouse button it will release the object. To do that first we set our variable set holding to false and then we need to go to the physics handle, drag it out, drag out with a pin, and type release. Release component. Connect it. And you're done for the physics handle. So we compile and save. And now if we go forward and uh, grab the cube, it grabs. And the cube is now following us. There's one thing that is a bit off though, it doesn't follow my rotation. So let's fix that. Go to the first person character, go to the viewport and select the arrow and drag the arrow to be a child of first person character. Compile and save and now test it. You'll see that it now follows wherever I'm looking. So this will be more useful. You can even throw it in the air like this. Here are some extra things you need to know about physics handles. If you select the physics handle component in the components tab, you'll see on the left in the details panel a section called physics handle. Now these variables are the important ones. They control the physics of the object being carried. One variable that is very important is the interpolation speed. This decides how fast the object will move to the grabbing location. Let's set that to 10 for now. So now if we go to the viewport and grab an object, it will move with more lag. If you set it to 50, it's instant. So in the next video, I'll show you how to make an effect like this. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let's see if this time we can reach 
100 likes. Stay tuned for part 2.